How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? What is it you would like to speak to me about? Well, I mentioned before that my parents had fled to Taurus. Perhaps I can tell you about that. In the early days of the Mandalorian War, there had been fighting closer to the Outer Rim worlds. Cathar was there, yes. My people had a great reputation as warriors, and that appealed to the Mandalore version of honor. They sought to test themselves against us, I think. Test themselves by bombing our world, slaughtering my people while they slept or while they ran. They swooped down from space, across the world, firing at anything that moved. They used ships in space to destroy all orbital facilities and bombard the surface. We did resist. And in spite of their violent attack, we did stave them off for quite a while. But in the end, we were doomed. We were not members of the Republic. Cathar was beyond the edge of the Republic, in the Outer Rim. And besides, they could not have known. Our interstellar communications were the first things the Mandalores hit. All other short-range communicators were jammed. We were on our own. We knew what was coming. We had fought the Mandalorians in the first war against Exar Kun and the Sith. We knew there would be no mercy for us. The most we could do was pack the few of our people who survived onto what few ships remained and send them off into space as fast as they could. Most did not make it. My parents carried me as a baby with them and were lucky enough to escape. They fled as far as they were able and eventually settled on Taris. They could stand running no further, I think. But Taris was a horrible choice. Dominated by humans, intolerant of other species, it made everyday life unnecessarily hard. My father... My father turned to stimulants. He spent much of his time in local bars and dives. But we are warriors. It runs through our blood. And when he was on stims, he... he... he became foolish. He let his warrior nature get the best of him, so he would get intoxicated, and he would fight. And finally, one day, he would die. Killed by a man who provoked him into a fight and killed him like an animal. I... I am sorry, I... I cannot talk about this any longer right now. You've been patient with me, haven't you? I suppose you deserve an answer. But you have to understand how difficult this is for me to say. With all my training, I should be able to control myself better than this. But you're not like anything I expected. You're not like any man I've ever met before. I find myself watching you when I don't mean to. I'm thinking about you when I don't want to. It isn't supposed to be like this. Every time I try to call on all my teachings to calm myself, they fail me. You have such power, such passion. I don't know if it's due to the bond between us, but I'm drawn to you. The Force is a part of you, as is your power. But that's not what attracted me to you. It's more than that. Maybe it's the bond we share. It gives us a certain intimacy. If I could, I would return to Dantooine. I need to be away from this bond of ours. I need to weaken it. I need to be anywhere but near you. But Malak must be stopped. My own feelings are nothing when compared to that. Yet I know this could affect the sake of our mission if it's not resolved. I can't let that happen. I think... I think we should have some privacy for this. Come with me. You're stronger than I am, and there's no point in telling me otherwise. You will be a great Jedi, I think. I hope. In some ways you make me feel weak, like I'm caught up in the wake of our destiny. But at the same time, you make me feel stronger, more alive. I realize now these feelings are part of the bond we share. The Jedi Council surely realize this. 
They knew my loyalty to the doctrines of our order would be tested on this mission. By facing and overcoming my feelings for you, I have learned a valuable lesson about control and the dangers of emotion. This is an important step in understanding the Force. I'm sorry if this is not what you wanted to hear, but I felt that it was important you know our infatuation was nothing more than a result of our powerful bond. You're the one who can't face the truth. Malak has to be stopped. How can I do that if I let myself be blinded by my feelings for you? You... you mean it, don't you? But how can I be sure you're not making a mistake? I... I have to resist. I have to be strong for both of us. But I don't... I mean, I can't. Malak will... Okay, you've made your point. Now shut up and kiss me, you fool. We shouldn't have done that. It was wrong. The Jedi are not allowed to fall in love. It was... it was a moment of weakness. When I kissed you, we shouldn't have. I'm sorry, no. I know we both wanted it, but we shouldn't have given in to our desire. We're Jedi. We can't act like this. Not now. Not where we still have to deal with Malak. I'm... I'm sorry. I, I don't blame you, but it was a mistake. I have to get out of here before somebody sees us together. You felt it, yes? Another vision? The Force continues to work through us, showing us the star maps unearthed by Revan and Malak. It is strange that anyone would have built a star map here. The entire surface of Manan is covered by nothing but vast oceans. The ocean floor is vast, and much of it is uncharted, even by the native Selkarth. But how could Revan and Malak have found their way down? No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. of assistance to you, Padawan. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Of course. Yeah, what do you want? Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. 
complete statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Statement. Certainly, Master. Allow me to input the proper sequences into the ship's computer. Are you ready? As you do. Hey there. What can I do for you? Don't worry. Manon's the source for all the Colto in the galaxy. That's why those fish-faced Selkath can stay neutral in this whole Sith Republic war. But I don't know much else about this place. Sorry I can't be more help, you know. Is there anything else I can do for you? Okay. Public people are so pathetic, sitting around groveling at the table scraps the Galactic Senators deign to give you. It makes me sick. The Senators work for the good of the whole galaxy, not for individual gain. Ha! Don't make me laugh, you gutless simp. It's the destiny of weak-minded fools like you to be ruled over by the strong, like we Sith. I'm warning you. Don't push me or you'll get just what you're asking for. Try it. Just try it. I'd love to see you throw the first punch. And with all the cameras around, the Selkath would be all over you inside of 30 seconds. You break their paws. You pay the price, Republic scum. But I can see that you're not man enough to back up your words anyway. If you ever feel like relieving yourself of your worthless existence, feel free to come by our enclave here. We have many, many ways to fulfill your wish. Yeah, what are you... Oh, I apologize, Master Jedi. I should not have been rude. No, really, I should apologize. I, I should try to control myself, as you Jedi do. Is there anything I can help you with? Well, these damn Sith are everywhere on Manon, pushing us for public citizens around, trying to goad us into breaking the law somewhere. Yeah, the Selkath want to maintain their neutrality in this war we're fighting with the Sith and they enforce it very strictly. So, we just have to sit here and let the Sith insult us and we can't raise a hand against them. Otherwise, the Republic will face severe Colto export restrictions, and that could lose us the war altogether. <laughs> You're joking, right? I'm sorry, but everyone knows what Colto is. It's the most powerful healing agent in the galaxy. I would have died several times myself if we didn't have this stuff handy. But the reason it's important here is that Colto is only found naturally on Manan, and all of our attempts to synthesize it have failed miserably. So, we sit here on the surface, the Selkath harvesting what Colto bubbles up from the bottom of the ocean, and we buy it from them. Well, us and the Sith, of course. The Selkath don't want to play favorites. The Selkath think that by staying neutral, they can play both sides, selling Colto to everyone that needs it and making themselves too valuable to be worth conquering. Well, that, and they threaten to destroy the only natural source of Colto on the planet if anyone tries to attack them. But I think they're underestimating the length the Sith will go to to get what they want. They're probably planning something already. Is there anything else you require? A star map? Like an ancient artifact or something? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I've never heard of it. Is there anything else I can do for you? Um, it's big. Real big. Actually, it's pretty much the only real city on the entire world. The only place for us air breathers, anyway. Manan is a water world, which you may have noticed on your way down to land here, inhabited natively by a species of fish people called the Selkath. They built this city to cater to us off-worlders and as a base of operations to export Colto, which is the only real thing they have to trade here. 
The Selkath think that by, well, that, and they threaten to destroy But I think they're underestimating the length the Sith will... Is there anything else? Of course. If you have any other questions, you should probably see Roland Wan. He's the Republic diplomat here. He's by the Republic Enclave, near the visitor residences. Oh, if you don't know where that is, go north from here, then south past the port official in the first courtyard, east into the second courtyard, then north, then east again. You got that? Have a pleasant stay, Master Jedi. yourself a fast little ship? <laughs> I forgot what engine sounded like. Closest thing to that on Kashyyyk is an uller in mating season. Ugh, frightful. Or it could be for the free food. What's the gunk that comes out of the synthesizer on this bucket anyway? Do you never clean the darn thing? to be enigmatic when I want to be. And don't you go telling me otherwise. You know, you remind me of someone else I knew ages ago. Pleasant enough fellow, great destiny, all of that. Breath like a bantha. Oh, very funny. Is it my fault that some people are so easily annoyed? They're like impatient little children. With blasters. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. Andor Vex was his name. The Force swirled around him like a hurricane. That's how great his destiny was. No, you wouldn't have. 
Sometimes swirling force is just swirling force. It gets us old Jedi's excited at our age, so we go, ooh, destiny. Well, it turned out that poor Andor believed a wee bit too much in the infallibility of that destiny. That overconfidence turned out to be his downfall. I don't know. Are you overconfident? I hadn't noticed. Even if I had, I would never comment on it. We're talking about Andor, remember? Let's see. Oh, yes, Andor's downfall. I was pretty young myself when it happened. At the time, I thought that Andor's destiny couldn't be more boring. Well, let's just say that I was a strapping young lad with a full head of hair, and Coruscant was a small town with a well. <laughs> I was just about to abandon Andor to whatever the Force intended for him when his ship was overtaken by a Dimian warship. Now, you've probably never heard of the Dimians, but at the time, they were a nasty lot led by a nastier overlord named Krat. Tall fellow, big teeth. Krat has us hauled onto the bridge of his ship for questioning, and that's when I knew that Andor's destiny was at hand. Of course he did. Haven't you been listening? It was not in the way you'd probably expect, though. Well, Andor decides that his destiny makes him invulnerable and starts making all sorts of demands. Free me now. I'm not answering questions. Blah, blah, blah. Don't you know who I am? Krat decides he's had enough and begins crushing Andor's neck. I told the boy he should have kept his mouth shut. I think he agreed, too. This could have just been gurgling noises. Finally, Krat has enough of Andor and tosses him aside into this giant energy intake shaft. Andor gets sucked in and starts bouncing around, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Maybe Andor hit something sensitive on the way down or just didn't agree with the reactor core. Next thing I know, all the ship's alarms are ringing. Everyone panics and I run, barely making it to the ship in time before the explosion. Krat dies horribly, and the Dimians never quite recovered. Changed the political course of the entire sector for centuries to come. I'd call that quite a destiny, wouldn't you? What? Are you kidding? What are the odds of that happening anyway? A billion to one? You should do so well as to be sucked into the engine of some evil Sith Lord, you know. Andor was a hero. Sort of. Anyway, go on. My throat is dry and you're making me cranky. Shoo! Thank you. 
Time to listen to your stories. I've got a full shipment of Kalto to load before.
Cho Lee, may I have a moment? There's something I wish to speak to you about. Yep, I figured it was only a matter of time until we had the whole come back to the order discussion. Well, I guess there's no avoiding it now, so let's get it over with. I know you have issues with the order, but you are a Jedi, Jo Lee. You command the Force. Without the guidance of the Council, how can you avoid falling to the dark side? Well, I've managed to avoid it the last 20 years or so. Besides, light side, dark side, they don't mean the same to me as they do to you. I don't see it absolutes. I want to stop Malak as much as I want, but I don't have to join the Order to do it. Look at Karth, or Kandorus. They're with us in this quest, but they are Jedi. The capacity for good or evil, like the Force itself, is in all living creatures. And belonging to the Jedi Order, or the Sith, or any group, won't change what you are at your core. I see you were quite adamant. No doubt you've had ample time to think on this during your long seclusion. I guess it was foolish of me to think I could sway your position so easily. Yeah, I'm old and stubborn. But I appreciate the effort. But from now on, you can just think of me as any other non-Jedi in our little group. With a lightsaber. And force powers. Not even Sunrin. But I heard the Selkath mention you and your friends. The Force has brought you to help us. Why? Whatever could be the matter, my dear? It's horrible, Jolie. Sunray has been arrested. The Sith have accused him of murder. Murder? But how? It's all a mistake, Jolie. Sunray isn't a murderer. Someone is trying to frame him. Calm down, Laura. Where's Sunray now? Sunray's being held at the Selkath courts. They won't let anyone in to see him. Please, go to the courts. Talk to the judges. Maybe the Selkath will listen to you. Don't worry, Alora. We'll get to the bottom of this and help Sunri. Somehow.
I doubt the Republic would be involved in anything illegal. Still, if this cell cat has concerns, we could look into it for him. Be careful here, kid. Start poking your nose in a place it doesn't belong, and you might not like what you find. <laughs> I hope you're here to play some Pazak. I don't come here looking for sparkling conversation. I prefer to make my credits gambling, but I never turn my back on an opportunity. Maybe this can be a profitable exchange for both of us. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't you ask the Mercs? Better yet, go down to the Embassy and ask the Republic. You don't waste my time now, or you got some more questions. They don't bother me, and I don't bother them. Works all around. You don't waste my time now, or you... So clear out already. Hey man, clear out. You're cramping my style with the ladies. I am not for hire. Perhaps the Mandalorian or the Achani can help you. Though they lack the stomach for certain jobs. They lack the resolve to do what needs to be done. The Achani believe in a non-existent warrior code of honor, and the Mandalorians prize credits above bloodshed, and I am Eritorian. Honor comes from slaying your opponent, and the true reward of any job is the taste of your foe's dying blood on your tongue. Ask whatever you wish, though you may find some of my answers distasteful. Perhaps you should ask them. The Republic prefers not to deal with my kind. Though maybe they need an Iridorian to finish the job. The mercenaries they hire must be failing, as they are never heard from again. That is all I know. Is there more you wish to ask? Manan has no such things, unless the Selkath have them hidden away at the bottom of the ocean. Is there more you would know? Yes, I'm not surprised. There are few on this watery world who feel comfortable in my presence. In the for a while, the Republic were hiring anyone they could get their hands on. Now they don't have any use for us, Mercs. It's too bad. I could have used the work. If you're here to offer me a job, I'm not interested right now. I got so many offers, I can't keep up as it is. Maybe that Iridorian skull slacker at the bar, or the Johnny nerf herder cowering in the corner is available. Well, nothing. Except that the Johnny are a bunch of fade dancers prancing in a battle with tiny weapons not fit for Mandalorian children. They hardly wear any armor because it slows them down when they run away. But the Johnny are better than the Iridorians. Those savages keep hacking at fallen foe even after death. Mutilating a corpse out of pure bloodlust. I even heard they'll turn on each other when the battle fever hits. Who wants to work with someone like that? I could pretty much name my price right now. Especially since the Republic's so desperate for mercs all of a sudden. They ain't saying, but the price is sure right. Of course, I haven't heard of anyone coming back, so I'm guessing the job ain't easy. I'm a realist. It was war, after all. And even though the Republic destroyed my people, the leaders of the Armada were Revan and Malak, so I hate the Sith just as much. And with this war, there's plenty of opportunity to take bloody vengeance against both sides and make a nice profit along the way. We Mandalorians are always practical, by the way. Not like those bloodthirsty Eridorians or those honor-bound Chani. Or anything else you want? So why are you telling me? If you're going, go. I don't need a status report. Thank <laughs> you. 
position within the Sith organization for one such as you. Your offer is pretty good, but I've heard some nasty things about you, Sith. Is it true you bomb Taras into dust? This is war. In war, certain distasteful acts cannot be avoided. But ask yourself this, when we win the war, would you rather be against the Sith or with us? You make a good point. And I've never turned down a job that pays up front. Excellent. Report to the Sith Embassy tomorrow for your assignment. You hiring for the Republic or the Sith? But then why are you wasting my time? There's big money to be made here. I can't risk missing a job offer because I'm yapping with you. I have no desire to speak to you. I know you have links to the Republic. You're new around here, aren't you? My name's Duan. Care to buy a Sith girl a drink? That is, unless you're one of those simpering Republic soldiers. We Sith are interested in a lot of things. If you're smart, you'll stay out of Sith business. But I don't really want to talk about that right now. I'm just here to have a couple of drinks and try to unwind, you know? Are you some kind of historian or something? You should forget about the past, look towards the future. That's why I joined the Sith. The Republic is old news. And then I get stuck on Manan, the worst post in the galaxy. It isn't easy here, you know. Not with all the Republic soldiers walking the streets while we sit and do absolutely nothing. Malak should send a fleet in and conquer this whole sector, Kolto or no. But I don't really want to talk about that right now. I'm... Oh, I get it. I get a little bit wild and you want to hold it against me. Come on, what's the matter? Afraid I'll drink you under the table? Hey, if you're not man enough to keep up, who needs you? Seems I'm not ladylike enough for some men. Well, I may be a woman, but I'm still a soldier. Barkeep, bring me another round. That's an awful lot of money. Is there something you're not telling me? Don't be so suspicious. The Republic is generous. We pay our mercenaries well. Makes sense, I guess. All right, I'm in. When do I start? Just show up at the Republic Embassy tomorrow and speak to our representative there. I'm sure I'll have some task he wants you to start on right away. Fine. I'm in the middle of a Republic recruiting drive right now. I need to hire these mercenaries before they sign up with the Sith. In case you hadn't noticed, there's a war. If we don't hire these marks, the Sith will. Now, excuse me. I have to continue my recruitments. <laughs> 
I hear there's going to be a heavy meteor shower in the Coruscant system this year. This sort of thing happened. They lost one of the orbital stations.